Good evening, Kiev. Uh, good day, everyone. So it is an enormous pleasure for me to participate in this conference uh, dedicated to 60th anniversary of uh, algebra section of Taras Shevchenko University. And I remember my participation in the 25th anniversary. Uh, that was my first conference and I was a PhD student at that time. And then after this 35 years, I still remember it like it was yesterday. So unfortunately, we could not meet uh, this time in Kyiv personally. Uh, but I think it is fantastic that we are able to do it online, uh, virtually. And I would like to use this opportunity and thank uh, local organizing organizers for the wonderful, fantastic job they did to make this happen. Yeah, thank you very much. And today I would like to talk about some recent developments in the Gelton Settling Theory. Uh, so the title of my talk is Localization Functors and the Gelton Settling Modules, which sort of uh, provides a, a link between uh, that conference 35 years ago, the 25th anniversary of algebra in Kyiv University, and the modern stage of the theory. And th this is based on uh, joint results with my colleague, Libor Krishka from Prague. So let me start with the motivation. And uh, so the first motivation comes from the uh, construction of building the new representation of Lie algebras uh, from the known ones. Yeah? So let's uh, take a finite dimensional simple Lie algebra G over complex numbers, fix a Cartan subalgebra H. And uh, we consider a category of so called weight modules for G. Uh, those the modules were uh, Cartan subalgebra is diagonalizable. And then the, the main problem here is to classify simple modules in this category, uh, which is still an open problem uh, beyond the case uh, GSL2. Right? So in many cases, the classification is known in many subcategories. Uh, for example, in the subcategory of weight modules with finite dimensional uh, weight subspaces, how we call this case finite weight multiplicities. And this is the classical result now, which is due to Soren Fernando and Olivier Mathieu. And I would like to quote here the main result, result of Olivier Mathieu uh, with this respect, which is the following, that every simple module over G can be obtained uh, as a twisted localization of some highest weight module L lambda. So here we have a certain functor denoted a ds mu applied to a highest weight simple module L lambda with a highest weight lambda. Yeah, so this functor d, uh, which is called twisted localization, it depends on two things, on a set s of commuting roots and a certain weight mu, uh, which is an element of the dual to Cartan, which defines uh, actually a twisting. So S stands for the localization and mu is for twisting. Okay, and we see here the sort of first importance of the localization functor, uh, which allows to uh, build any uh, weight module with finite multiplicities from the highest weight uh, simple representations. The second motivation for this consideration comes from the Gelfon settling theory. So the, the classical setup is the following. So we take uh, the Lie algebra of n by n matrices, or GLN, and we uh, take a, a chain of embeddings of uh, GL subalgebras, for example, starting from the upper left corner. Yeah, but that's not essential. We can start from the lower. Uh, right corner or we can start from the middle, it doesn't matter which chain. We just need to consider a chain of n uh, Lisa Belgians. And then uh, 
induced by this chain of subalgebras, we have a chain of embeddings of the universal enveloping algebras, okay, UMs, where UM stands for the enveloping algebra of GLM. In each of the U's, we choose uh, the center, which is known to be a polynomial algebra in M variables. For example, the generators, we can choose the CM case, which are such sums of the cycles, corresponding cycles. And the Gelfand settling subalgebra gamma yeah, of the enveloping algebra of GLN is defined as the polynomial algebra generated by um, all, all these uh, generators CMK, by all the centers ZMs. And the uh, Gelfand settling module is a finitely generated module M on which gamma acts locally finite. Right, so gamma has a torsion. And for a simple module, it implies that uh, uh, this module has a generalized, a generalized eigenspace decomposition with respect to gamma. So we do not require here that gamma is diagonalizable, right? like in the case of weight modules. And then gamma contains Cartan. So here we have... Uh, uh, a subcategory of weight modules. So it's a, it's a large subcategory. It contains, uh, uh, for example, all modules with finite weight multiplicities and essentially all known examples um, of uh, weight modules over GLM. Right? They are Gelfand settling modules. And the, the series is uh, uh, very well developed. And it was developed in many different uh, directions in the presentation series of Lie algebras. So I just mentioned here some results, uh, the classical original result uh, papers of Gelfand Settlin, later Gelfand Graev. In the 90s, we started to develop uh, the theory with Yuren Tolich Drost and Sergei Adamovich of Sienko. And later, Mazarchuk, uh, results of Kostan Wolok, and uh, recent results of Ramirez and Zatunaisky, uh, Grancharov, Ramirez and Zatunaisky, Ramirez and Zhang, and uh, many others. Uh, the, the theory has uh, strong connections with uh, categorification theory, so these are modern views, and with the theory of column branches. Yeah, uh, rel uh, rel um, in the quantum field theory and the theory of rational Galois orders uh, recently developed again. So I just mentioned the main contributors to the theory. Okay, and so we see that in the A type, which is GLN or SLN, this is very well developed. And then the main question is how to extend it to other types, B, C, D, and exceptional Lie algebras. And there are different ways one can try to do. There is a classical, uh, one can try to use a classical Gelfand settling basis in the orthogonal case, or Molev's Gelfand settling basis in the symplectic case, or one can change. Uh, the subalgebra uh, gamma and consider other maximal commutative subalgebras in the enveloping algebras. And there are many, for example, uh, one of the quantum shift of argument commutative subalgebras, which go back to the work of first Mission Kofomenko, then Winberg, Molev, Rybnikov, recently Akimova. Uh, I forgot to mention Anne Moreau, and so on and so forth. But uh, none of these approaches were successful uh, in the attempt to generalize Gelfand settling theory. I must mention a very recent result of Natalia Galavashuk in the orthogonal case. Uh, is quite promising. So there is a hope that one will be able to build up the Gelfand settling theory analogously to the A type. Uh, but this is quite involved uh, technique 
and the results are sophisticated, so it's not uh, yet uh, suitable uh, for our purposes. So it's still important to find the way to consider gelfand settlin modules or analogs of gelfand settlin modules in the case of other types beyond type A. And one more uh, motivation for this work is the uh, theory of vertex algebras, uh, where it is important to construct uh, positive energy representations for affine vertex algebras uh, for the quantum field theory. So if we denote by uh, G is still our simple Lie algebra finite dimensional, and LKG will be um, a standard simple module, uh, highest weight module with a trivial highest weight uh, for uh, the affine, uh, affine Lie algebra associated with G. All right, so affine Lie algebra, so we take uh, G tensor with Laurent polynomials and uh, take universal central extension, which is one dimensional in this case. And then Cartan subalgebra acts trivially. So this is a model induced from one dimensional trivial representation of G. And the central element acts uh, by K. And it turns out that th this is a simple model over a finely algebra, but also it has an interesting structure, an important structure over vertex algebra. And the relevant question for the quantum field theory is to study representations of, of this uh, vertex algebra. There, there is a Joux functor which establishes one to one correspondence between the set of simple positive energy modules over this algebra. Where positive energy means that there is a grading of the module by Z plus. And the set of simple modules over this quotient of certain quotient of the enveloping algebra of underlying G. And this quotient nowadays is called this Joux algebra. All right, so we, we get this correspondence between uh, the representations of the vertex algebra and the represent, certain representations of the enveloping algebra or, or certain representations of Lie algebra G. And then again, by studying these representations of, over G, uh, one can uh, gain some information about representations of the vertex algebra. Again, I mentioned some recent developments in these directions. And in particular here, in these works, uh, in some of these works, uh, localization Functor played an important role. Yeah, so let me introduce now localization functor. So we fix a, a root, a positive root alpha of G, consider a minus alpha root element, let's call it F alpha, uh, non zero obviously. Uh, you know, some developing algebra is U. Then we look at the set. F alpha, which is a multiplicative set generated by the non-negative powers of F alpha. And this is an OR set. So we can localize U with respect to F alpha and we denote localization V alpha U. And then we can uh, localize any G module just by tensoring it with D alpha U. And if we have a set of commuting roots, alpha 1, alpha k, call this set S, then we get a corresponding localization functor DSM. And so this explains the notation from the uh, Meteor theorem in the beginning. So the functor uh, D alpha was introduced uh, by Deodar and was used uh, extensively to study category O. And uh, so here I mentioned just some of the names uh, and uh, contributions in this direction. Um, in, most, uh, in most cases, alpha was assumed to be a simple root. 
and this allows to stay in the category O up to the conjugation uh, of the Borel subalgebra. And we are going to explore exactly the case when alpha is not simple. This will be significant for us. So now we, we define the twisting functor, which is uh, essentially a localization functor defined above, uh, but we denote it T alpha, is a functor on the category of G modules. When we take this D alpha functor, I apply to M, and then mod out the M itself, which is a G sub model. As I mentioned, so if alpha is a simple root, T alpha will preserve the category O after conjugation. In fact, it can be composed with another functor uh, to, work, to, to work in the same category O. But this is not the case when alpha is not simple. So if alpha is not a simple root, we go out of the category O. And for us, it is significant. Let's take a SL2 subalgebra corresponding to the root alpha. In uh, the Casimir element of this form, which is the generator of the center of the enveloping algebra of this SL2 subalgebra as alpha. Then the functor uh, T alpha, in fact, commutes with the translation functors, meaning tensoring with finite dimensional G modules. And it induces a functor between these two categories, which are categories of weight G modules on which S alpha plus or minus is finite. Plus or minus means plus is uh, spent by E alpha and minus spent by F alpha. So it means uh, in the left hand side, E alpha uh, acts locally finite, in the right hand side, F alpha acts locally finite. The interesting observation is that these categories are in fact tensor categories, which is not true in general for the category uh, for gelfon settling modules. So if you take a tensor product of two gelfon settling modules uh, over GLN, uh, this is not necessarily uh, a gelfon settling module. Let's denote by gamma alpha the commutative subalgebra and the enveloping algebra uh, generated by Cartan and this uh, Casimir quadratic Casimir element C alpha. And uh, we see the, the main uh, theorem, which says that we can construct, uh, using the localization functor, we can construct uh, certain modules, which are quite uh, complicated, and they have infinite dimensional weight spaces, in, uh, but they have a finite gamma alpha multiplicities. So changing the definition of a gelfand settling module we can call it gamma alpha gelfon settling module if gamma alpha acts locally finitely on this module. Uh, not the whole gamma, as in the case of GLN. And here and now we're in the arbitrary finite dimensional G, right? So we don't have uh, a choice, a natural choice of gamma in this case. But we consider this gamma alpha, which is just extension of Cartan by the Casimir element C alpha. Yeah, and we introduce a concept of a gamma alpha Gelfand settling model in this case. And then the statement is that if we apply a T alpha functor to any weight module, the result will be a gamma alpha Gelfand settling module. And moreover, we know when it contains finite gamma alpha multiplicities, when it has finite gamma alpha multiplicities. So it's if and only if the first cohomology of F plus S alpha minus with coefficients in M is a weight uh, module with finite dimensional uh, weight spaces. In particular, this is the case when M is a simple highest weight module. Okay, so we have a good control of the image of T alpha if we apply it to the highest weight modules. Uh, the resulting resulting module is not necessarily simple 
in general, but in many cases it is. So we have a way of constructing new families of simple uh, G modules, which are weight modules with infinite dimensional weight multiplicities, but they have a finite gamma alpha, uh, gamma alpha multiplicities. So let's uh, consider a parabolic subalgebra, P, which is a Levy, uh, it has a Levy factor L and um, the radical U. Uh, so L is a sum reductively algebra and U is a uh, nil potent radical and U bar is the opposite nil radical. So we take uh, a weight lambda, which is the dominant weight for uh, for the Levy factor L, and we consider a, fi a finite dimensional uh, P module with highest weight lambda on which U acts uh, trivially. Then we can build up the gen corresponding generalized Verma module with highest weight lambda as such tensor product. And now we use our main tool, the localization functor T alpha and apply to this generalized Verma model. So we call the image this W lambda alpha. And this will be our main object. By the theorem above, this is the weight module with finite gamma alpha multiplicities. In fact, it is always cyclic model, sometimes simple. And the significant observation is that, in fact, Whatever commutative subalgebra gamma of the enveloping algebra UG we choose, which contains gamma alpha, then this module will have finite gamma multiplicities. So this is a real analog of the Gelfand setting module for other types, not type A, when gamma can be any commutative subalgebra containing gamma. And uh, know that this module has infinite weight multiplicities. So it's not in the category of uh, modules in the uh, Meteor theorem in the beginning. And we can say uh, uh, many things about these modules. It has very nice properties. In particular, it has a very nice geometric uh, realization using the theory of D modules. So I just, in the remaining couple minutes, I briefly described that. So if we choose uh, a basis of the opposite and nil radical U bar, let's call it F beta, and we denote X beta the linear uh, coordinate functions on U bar with respect to this basis. So we can consider the while algebra, A U bar, generated by uh, this variable's axis and the corresponding partial derivatives together with canonical commutation relations. Then there exists a homomorphism of the enveloping algebra UG into such tensor product uh, of the while algebra with the uh, lambda highest weight uh, finite dimensional representation of the Levy factor uh, shifted by rho by rho, which corresponds only to the half of the sum, sums, half of the sum of positive roots, uh, which correspond to uh, an radical u. And then the explicit description of this homomorphism is given by this scary formula. Sigma here, that's a representation of f. And, and this formula was uh, initially obtained by Krishka and Somberg, and, and it can be applied here uh, to arbitrary uh, parabolic subalgebra P. And this notation, so this bracket here, means with index beta, means that this is a beta's coordinate of the element inside of the bracket with respect to the basis F beta. And then A with uh, this sub indices uh, U bar or P are corresponding parts of A. 
uh, with respect to the decomposition of the algebra into a parabolic subalgebra plus uh, opposite new radical u bar. And there is an element uh, ux in the formula, which is viewed as element of this tensor product uh, given by this sum, right? So here are our local coordinates and here are the elements, the basis elements of the opposite nil radical. And the root, uh, roots beta here are the positive roots of the nil radical u. Now we can take uh, two uh, modules over the our while algebra a u bar. One is a polynomial ring in partial derivatives. Yeah, we associate it with the while algebra module of the ideal generated by the variables. And here gamma, gamma runs through the positive roots of u. And one more ring where uh, the alpha's partial derivative is changed to uh, to the variable. Right. So here, here we had all positive roots of u. Now with the alpha's root uh, partial derivative becomes a variable, and all others stay as partial derivatives. Again, it can be identified with the quotient of the while algebra by the corresponding ideal described here. And then there is a very uh, explicit realization of both the generalized Verma module and this gamma alpha Gelfman settling module W uh, using uh, these representations of the while algebras. So it's, it gives a, a, a very explicit realization of our this uh, quite uh, complex structures, right? This uh, infinite dimensional uh, module with infinite dimensional weight multiplicities, uh, but with finite gamma alpha multiplicities. Yeah, and this is gamma alpha Gelfand settling module as uh, via differential operators acting on the corresponding polynomial ring, right? So we have this structure. And uh, so it, uh, we used uh, these modules, these gamma alpha Gelfand settling modules to, to construct uh, positive energy representations of simple affine uh, vertex algebra uh, by father on applying the Jus functor, right? And it was very successful. So the papers can easily be found in the archive, so I will not give the references. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.